Hello and welcome to the 22nd, I think, video in this series making a simple Adobe Robin for Android using Cocos 2DX version 3. As I've explained in the last couple of videos, time is very tight, unfortunately, these months, so it's been a while since uh, I've done the last video. Unfortunately, I set aside today actually to do a couple of videos, and two things have happened. One is my microphone is broken, so I'm recording via the laptop mic here, because it's the only one I've got. And secondly, I seem to have been struck down with some kind of bug, so I probably don't sound um, like my normal self. So I'm hoping the video is going to be okay, but it's typical of them on the day I've set some time aside to do this. Um, conditions aren't the best. So what we're going to do in this video then, the end of the last video, or in the last video, we simply open the application up, um, built it inside Eclipse, which I've got open here, and then ran it, and I filmed it running as well on one of my Android tablets to show that everything was running in OK. But what we want to do now is actually start looking at coding inside the Java layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to save our music volume, high score, and settings volume in the settings bundle for the application, but using uh, the Java layer to do it. Now, Cocos 2DX Framework provides already some settings saving um, functions which are cross-platform and for this purpose actually are better to use than what I'm doing inside this project but the reason I want to do this is to do to use the JNI, so the Java native interface a bit so you can see um, with an easy application which saving settings is easy how that then um, works. Now the actual code required inside the C++ to call functions inside the Java layer is fairly involved but the good thing is, it's already been done in the Cocos 2DX framework by the audio engine. And we'll simply later on, in a similar way to the series with the version 2 of Cocos 2DX, we'll simply be cutting and pasting some of the code there and using that code to call our methods inside our own project. Before we do that, what we need to set up inside the Java code is the actual settings bundle so that we can use it to save our settings. Now I'm inside the source folder, src folder, inside the org.cocos2dx.cpp package here. And this app activity here, uh, which extends the Cocos2dx activity, is our activity screen for our application. So it's what's created when our application starts. So what I want to do in this video then is just verify that this is indeed our application that's being created. So what we'll do is right click inside the uh, class here and just go to source and override implement methods and we're going to um, override the onCreate here with the bundle and this onCreate then is called when the activity is created and what we do inside here obviously is call our onCreate and the saved instance state you don't need to worry about um, for this project and all I want to do is I want to log some information to the screen to make sure everything's okay so what I need to do to log is I need what's known as a tag so that I can prefix and then later on filter for the logging information from uh, this activity. So I'm just going, going to make a final static uh, string. I think that's the right way of right, doing it inside Java. Um, I haven't done it for a while. And we'll just call this um, Cocos 2D X Java layer so that we know that we've got the uh, Java layer running OK like this. And then the last thing I want to do is after the super on create is just log. I'm going to use something called log and then .d for debug. And you need to supply your tag and then you need to supply your string of what you want to log. So I'll just call it on create cold. And that's all I want to do for now. Now the log.tag will need to import something for this. So I'll import the android.util and that should leave everything running. I'm just going to save and build. And now what I'm going to do is run the application. The tablet's plugged in. I'm not going to film the screen because there's nothing new, but I am going to have a look at the logging app output. So I'm just going to click up here the debug, simple Flappy Robin, switch over to the DDMS. And there's the filter here for the com.bluefever.simple Flappy Robin. And I'm just going to wait for the application to launch. It's waiting for the debugger. And now the application has started up. So if I now go then into the logging information, oops, I was at the top of the screen to scroll down, what you can see is somewhere up here, we've got this line here, which says that onCreate has been called. So we can know that when the application first starts, then that the code inside this onCreate then is run. And we also know 
that this app activity here in the code provided inside this package then is the activity representing our app. If you're not familiar with Android programming, then an activity can simply be seen as the screen. Um, and if you change a screen, then you switch to another activity, a bit like switching a scene inside uh, Cocos 2DX. And the way Cocos, Cocos 2DX works is everything is simply based on one activity or one screen. So now we've done that then, I want to create a new class inside uh, this package here. So I'm just going to right click and go to new and class. And we're going to call this class CJNI helper. And if you did the previous series, you'll be very familiar with this because we're basically doing exactly the same stuff. And just hit finish. And inside this class, then the first thing I want to do is I want to make a public and final static string and it's going to be called I'm going to call it settings name and we'll just call it uh, Robin settings because the way the settings work as you'll see in a minute inside Java is you save your settings as what's called known what's known as bundles and you give these bundles then names so you can have different sets of settings stored um, under different bundle names, but you have to give a bundle name when storing your settings. So we're going to give this then a settings name here. Each setting that's stored inside the bundle is simply done by a key value reference. So we supplied a string, a key, and we use that key then to uh, retrieve our value. So now we've got our name here. What we'll do is, is we'll just um, do public final static string, uh, but not settings name. We'll call this the um, high score key and I'm actually going to just use exact oops there you go you can tell I happen to have been using Windows recently because I've done the wrong copy and paste and I'll just use the key also called high, high score key like this so whenever we use this then this string will be used to save our high score setting now what we've done that though is we actually need to um, allow this J and I helper class to get access to the um, settings bundle and the settings bundle we set up inside our activity here so the way we'll do this um, or get this actually done is we'll have a function inside here a public function a static function and this one we'll just call setup and this will then take in some shared preferences and I think if I hover over this now Eclipse should um, tell me well, I want to import, but it hasn't yet, so I'll just call this shared prefs. This will be the bundle that comes in. And all we're simply doing is maintaining then a link to these shared preferences inside our class. I'm just going to inside the class here, make a static shared preferences like so. So we have a link and I'll just call it prefs. And I'm getting a little bit concerned Okay, good. I can import shared preferences. I thought I'd spelled things wrong. And obviously this is a void. And now all I want to do then is make sure that our prefs equals shared. And I think it's control and space to complete the preferences like so. So if I now call this static, static function from the app activity, then I've got a reference now inside this JNI helper class always to the application's shared preferences. So now what we need to do then is inside our own create we need to set up our shared preferences bundle so we'll just say shared preferences and just call it prefs and this will then equal shared and I'll just hover over this so I can import shared preferences. Okay and this will be then shared pref oops, preferences and then there's uh, I thought there was a, a function here. Let me just double check. Ah, it's called get shared preferences. So get shared preferences, and then what we want is the name. So we say cj and i helper dot, and then settings name. So this is the name of our preferences bundle, and then we want nothing else to be able to access this. So we select the mode private like so. 
and this then gets create if it's not already uh, existing this will then create for us an application a bundle of preferences underneath the name that we declared under this string in general helper with private and give us a reference to it now now what we need to do is go to our sheet C J N I helper and inside there then we can call the setup and we simply send in our link to our preferences like so and now our preference bundle is set up and ready to use and the last thing I'm going to do just to finish off this video because it's dragged on a little bit long with the explanation is just copy the import uh, Android util .log into there and just copy in this logging here like so and drop it down into here and obviously we need the tag as well we'll just copy this tag I suppose I could have used um, the app activity but it doesn't really matter and we'll call this Cocos um, CG and I help a Java layer like so. So we've got a slightly different tag for this and save. And now here we'll say setup and preferences called and save. So now what I'm going to do then is just run the application and it's not going to be very dramatic. We're going to see basically what we saw before, but we should see something telling us that the preferences are being set up as well. So I'll just go over to the DDMS and then click the debug here to run the application and now scroll down to the bottom because I forgot. Um, and also terminate like this. Okay, and now you can see that the information has been scrolling up with the path and information. But if I just go at the top here, you can see that we've got the uh, on create called, and we've also now got for the J C J and I helper Java layer here. You can see that we've actually got the setup preferences called. So what's happened then in the application is just to reiterate the on create has been called and we've created our preferences bundle if it didn't already exist and then we've called the setup static function on our side uh, on our CGNI helper class and then we've logged this to the screen. So what we'll do then in the next video is we'll actually get around start using our um, key for our high score to actually write the functions inside the Java here to set and retrieve our high score inside our shared preferences. But I'll do that in the next video so I've gone on for long enough in this one. So thanks very much for watching and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.